Okay, here we've got a prototype uh, 1984 Princess Leia poncho figure. So, this is quite a rare item, and it's the second vintage, uh, second vintage prototype I've got. So, so the other ones are Leia as well. That's the Leia Bosch, and but this is the Leia in combat punch puncher. So it consists of a pink head, the body in one colour, the torso and the two arms are in the same colour and then the legs are in another colour. There's no paint on this figure so they can't grade this figure in terms of paint and it's UK graded and you know there's not much known about these sort of things. I mean I went on the internet and I typed in lit layer combat poncho prototype and you get something similar to this that comes up but it's unassembled and that there's stuff about that being from Mexico that's a li made out of li lily led uh, over parts overstock and so that but I mean it's UK graded so this must be a real the real McCoy unless the UK graders don't really know what they're talking about and let's see if we can get a better look at the figure and see how just a really plain pink head sort of uh, greeny beige torso and arms and then the legs which look pretty long in the sort of spearmint grey colour so that's the layer. You can see in the shoulders that there's quite a gap between the two bits of plastic on the torso and then the pink head. So you can really see the gap there. And then the hair in pink looks like a uh, grape. And then the greyish pants. Okay. If you look at the label here, it says Star Wars Princess Leia Poncho Prototype 1984 Lu Lucasfilm Limited. Rarity is three stars, and the figure gets 80% 80 80 overall. So this is a much higher grade than the Leia Bosch I got, but it looks really nice. <laughs> Chances of owning a Star Wars prototype are pretty rare, and you know these don't come up often. This came from the same seller as the Leia Bosch, and went for a bit more than the Leia Bosch as well. So I was hoping it would get, I'd get it for cheaper, but someone really I had to go out as well, so I can had to put high bid in to make sure I got it. I nearly lost it. But you can see the shoulders there. It doesn't look fully attached at the torso. And then, I mean, it does say in the Leah Bosch that that's non-sonic welded, whereas this one may be welded, stuck together. At the where this one's from, I don't know. It could be Mexican. It could be a. Uh, uh, the US or Hong Kong, who knows? That's where the figures were made in those days. Nice item, though. Not the best Princess Leia. Probably the easiest one to find now, carded. The cheapest, certainly. So you could probably get Leia Poncho carded for about 30 quid. But this is the prototype, UK graded, looks nice, sweet item, these don't come up often on eBay, so, you know, I've been spending way too much of late, so, <laughs> well, you know, there's one more item I'm watching, that's it, after that, no more, and that's already going to hit massive price
but this thing man is real nice. If I could find a Leah Bosch where I've put, put that away, I'd put these two as a comparison, but that's already on uh, YouTube. But I never reviewed that, I just uh, filmed it a bit and you know. I haven't got this figure loose, I've ne I never had this figure loose when I was a kid, so I've got a card as one. I've got one that's AFA graded and I, I, I got it about a year or two years ago and I put it away and I don't know where it is. So, you know, that was pretty cheap, so it's an easy figure to find. I mean, in terms of sculpting, it's not the best layer. The head's pretty terrible. doesn't really look like layer. And in pink, it looks kind of disturbing. And then the uh, legs look way too long. But this is what they used to make this figure. Well, it obviously comes with a green poncho, a, a movable helmet, and a, a belt with a little pistol. But this is. So if you're interested and you go on uh, Google and just type in layer prototype action figure Kenner and then see what comes up and you go to images it makes it easier and there is a, a picture of this or something similar to this unassembled and then the best thing sites for this sort of thing are Rebel Scum and there's a few good UK UK sites as well. So, if you want to want to find out more about prototypes, go to Rebel Scum. Uh, Star Wars Collectors Archive is really good as well. They've got a brilliant section on prototypes and all that sort of stuff. So, that's that's really good. And, and I know Gus Lopez and them lot have got a book out about prototypes as well. But you know, I haven't got that yet. And then there's the John Kellerman book coming out soon, so you know. Anyway, I'll take some pictures of photographs and stuff as well. I always believe phot photography captures, captures these figures better. That's why I still use photographs. Most people that just do film, but I think photographs really... You can see more with photographs than with, uh, you know, video. But this is a nice item. Rare sweet and you know when are you going to get ever get a prototype from 19 the 1980s you can get prototypes from modern Star Wars figures like that um, Poggle the Lesser I just got but you know I'll, actually I'll go get that and show compare the two okay so I've got the modern prototype this is about 10 years old now. This is Poggle the Lesser and he comes from a three set from Attack of the Clones and he's also UK graded and he gets 85% for the figure. He's unpainted as well and he's from a sort of a uh, Geonosian war room so he's the king of the Geonosians as well and you know it looks pretty cool so he's a modern prototype, that's the vintage prototype behind it, that's the Princess Leia. And he's UK graded, gets three stars for rarity. Um, and it's a Star Wars prototype, no dates, no stamp, rarity is three stars, figure is 85%. And it's quite a nice figure, nicely detailed. Uh, it have 2002 articulation, which would be pretty limited by today's standards, but I like the wings at the back and the detailing on the costume or his limited costume but the sort of arachnid or arthropod it's an arthropod isn't it? insectoid uh, characteristics of this thing this strange sort of king of the termite people with the sort of swollen uh, things that hang off like a beard and he sort of talks in a sort of clicking sound so, you know, I Poggle the Lesser Prototype, uh, which is a modern prototype, nice thing. And then the Princess Leia in Combat Poncho from 1984, 
and that's a um, vintage prototype which is I mean you can go on eBay and these things are easy to find uh, there's a lot in China I don't know if they'd be safe to buy but they they're, 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 they look pretty I mean they usually have free package pa uh, packing as well, uh, posted in packing so I don't know the risk getting it from China, but I'm sure because that's where they're made. Um, and then you've got the wings. Let's look at there's layer there, both UK graded. So there's the front and back. And there's in the front again. Poggle the lesser, king of the um, Geonosian and Princess Leia. We've both got two royal characters there. We've got Poggle the Lesser and Princess Leia Organa of by then the destroyed planet Alderaan. And you know, so two prototypes, rare figures, you know, sweet items, especially that one. I've got to find that Leia Bosch and stick that up with this, that'd be really nice. So you've got two sweet figures there. Okay, okay, let's get cracking. Okay, here we've got the box for the Kubrick 2009 uh, Boba Fett in the sort of vintage style. And these are the six figures in the range. So you had Boba Fett, which is the Macquarie Johnson art artwork, the Holiday Special Boba Fett, the Boba Fett black and white prototype, which would be the sort of, that's the sort of, like the... Hasbro Vintage Collection Mail Away Boba Fett, that one there. Then you've got the Droids Boba Fett, which is from the cartoon series from the 1984-85. Then you've got Boba Fett the Vintage Toy, and you've got Boba Fett the McCrory version with a sort of different mouthpiece. So you've got quite a nice lot of Boba Fett figures to pick up, and these are really hard to find. And you've got the logo there, it says, says Takara, Tommy, and you've got a picture here at the top of the original 1979 Boba Fett and a 21 back card, and you've got lots of Japanese writing, and then it says, uh, for ages 15 and up, so, and then here's the figure, it's an unopened bag, oops, I don't want to show that first, uh, it's done in sort of animated, well the original, like the he head's really similar to the original uh, Kenner Boba Fett he he headdress and then it's got sort of more a Lego type or, or a Kubrick type body but the paint jobs are very accurate to the original um, 1979 Boba Fett and it even comes with a gun that's just a, a, a smaller version of the Stormtrooper blaster very nice and here's the little mini figure and then what makes this figure even more special is this J slot rocket because this is a, a chase figure so you know there's a, 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 a one of the chase the other chases is a, proto a prototype Boba Fett like this but it's all, all um, same figure as this one with uh, an L slot rocket firing ro rocket this is a J slot and that's all in grey. This is the sort of painted version with the J slot rocket. So that's a bonus feature for this figure. Uh, these are quite expensive. Uh, not much information. Well, I guess if you go on the website and there's a few Kubrick collector sites, but you know. This whole series of Boba Fett, you know, Boba Fett is just such a popular character, they're going to be hard to get. Again, if you go on eBay, I think there's a lot of, lot of these on sale in Hong Kong. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And, um, but, I mean, what makes this rare is the, the J slot. Nice, nice rare item, it says on the leg there 2009 Lucasfilm Limited and you know <laughs> the 
I fired it inside the bag, I'd never be able to get the rocket back into the slot, so I'm not going to do that. But if you look at the he head, it looks exactly like the original vintage figure. So there's at least three chase figures in this series. So, you know, there's probably more. Okay. I'm not much of a. I've only got. This is only my third ever Kubrick figure. So, you know, they're hard to get in the UK. You can get them in Forbidden Planet in London. So, that's the only place really. Or on eBay. Nice item though. The rock, rocket firing J slot. Chase figure. Boba Fett. And there's his little box there. Okay. Cheers. Goodbye. Goodbye. Signing off. Stop video. Video stop. Okay, here we've got an action force figure from the mid 80s. It's uh and if you look at the top corner it says Action Man, which was the UK uh sort of G.I. Joe thing. But it was pretty specifically British and this is on a European card, so it's got the languages in French and Dutch. It's got the addresses on the back for Clipper, which is the Dutch distributor, and Meccano, the French distributor, plus Palatoy. And it's got the name of the figure in French and English. The French is called Artil Artilier SAS, and in Dutch it's Anvil's Commando. So it just sounds wicked in Dutch, Anvil's Commando. And I think it's just an assault trooper, SAS assault trooper. And the figure comes with a grey sort of American helmet with a sort of balaclava on, a black SAS jumpsuit with a gun, uh, some bullets around, a yellow scabbard for an SAS type knife, an M3 um, grease gun which is a sort of World War II American machine gun, a sort of gas mask with a oxygen oxygen thing in the back, and there, it's got the SAS logo, and it says collection in French and Ger uh, Dutch there. So, very simple card, very bright, stands out quite, uh, quite strongly with the red at the top, Action Force, and uh, the blue at the bottom. Eventually this will become G.I. Joe in the UK. So it become Action Team and then it would just become G.I. Joe as more and more G.I. Joe figures imp imported into the UK. But this is uh, an early sort of Palatoy take on Action Man three and three quarter inch figures. And the articulation is pretty limited. It's got a civil head, shoulders and uh, at the waist. That's it. That's quite a nicely detailed figure. I mean, I had a few of these back in the day. I had uh, the German Stormtrooper, the Desert Rat. So I had the first releases of these figures. And, you know, definitely got a Star Wars influence to them. You know. So, cool figure. And I'll show you the back. I mean, I got this in Orbital Comics in London. I've seen it there a few times, but I went there last Friday and I thought, ah, uh, you know, I've heard and ooed about buying this before and I thought, ah, uh, I might as well pick it up. It was nine quid. There's the thing, instructions in uh, French and Dutch. And then I'll show you the back of the card. Oops, dropped the case. And it says in French and in uh, Dutch, and then it's got all the different figures there. You can see the SAS team there. There's the actual number 13 is the Anvil's Commando. I mean, these figures are pretty cheap still on eBay. You can still pick them up for about 20 quid, 10, 20 quid carded. And, you know. Here's the free figure you could send off for. It's called something like Skeletron. Yeah, Skeletron. And you've got the cards to cut out to send off for the figure. It's got the information there in Dutch and 
French and then you know a little thing you could put fill in and send off and then it says at the bottom it's got the Meccano and Palatoy dress but you can hardly make that out and have a look at the figures at the back so it's a really nice you know because I did have these when I was a kid not many and these were the forerunner of British G.I. Joe three and three quarter inch figures so you've got the uh, Artillia SAS Gumballs Commando and easy to find these you're not going to pay more than 20 quid for this uh, looks really nice and if you're into G.I. Joe I never was into G.I. Joe I don't like don't like all the metal bits in the figures and they look I prefer like these ones they look more realistic I mean they they did get increasingly stupid looking I prefer the first series which was like based on World War 2 stuff but I mean that pilot's pretty cool Frogman, you know. So, have one quick look at this. So, there he is, SAS C Commando, Assault Commando, with his backpack, gas mask, and his M3 gas gun, grease gun. You know. Okay, so that's your action force figure worth tracking down if you're into G.I. Joe cheap in the UK and the most famous thing about this connected to Star Wars is that there's an, a weapons pack with the same machine gun that you get in the YPS um, snowtrooper so people buy that pack just to get the machine gun because they can put that to with a snowtrooper it's got to be the correct kind of uh, snowtrooper and then they've got a YPS snowtrooper okay so I think then you need to put Trilogo Snowtrooper plus the, the correct weapon from the Action Force Weapons Pack. And then you've got your YPS Snowtrooper. Okay, so cheers. Bye. Signing off. Ready for action. Okay, when I was in uh, Orbital Comics in London, uh, they had a few Star Wars figures left. They had a whole load a while back, but they've only got a few left. And they had this one going for 10 quid. And it's uh, Shaq T from 2010, I think. The, just the last of the Legacy Collection figures. So this one came with the Han and the... Le I mean, the, the... Let's see, the kids, Jason Solo and uh, Janna Solo, plus the Space Trooper. And it comes with a part for a robot. Uh, to build BJJ38, it's Shaq T in the sort of from um, the game of um, what is it? What's that game called? You know, something. What's it called? Star Wars Unleashed, maybe. Uh, Shakti is a member, Jedi Master, a member of the Jedi Council. She survives the execution of Order 66 and eventually arrives on Felucia where she prepares the false sensitive solutions to an uh, unavoidable encounter with Darth Vader. And, you know, it's a really good figure. You can see uh, uh, on the back of the card there's a picture from the game. And then you've got the picture of the figure here with her lightsaber looking rather, you know. I've seen a few revi reviews of this. Flyguide.net does a good review of this figure. So check out his review because he takes it out of the box and there's a nice picture on the front of the card of Shakti and then you can see the actual figure herself looking rather you know kind of oh yeah what's his name Hong does a good review of this figure as well so you can see that she's wearing next to nothing just you can see sort of reddish skin colour, all the detailing on, on her legs with the paint applications and then the costuming, the legs and you know quite an interesting figure. Very nice, very detailed, quite high
hard figure to find. Let's see. Looking very purpley reddish. It's got the offer for the EP and EPO, or whatever it's called, with Kai Gon Jin. And, you know, a great, great figure. If you can find it, track it down. But this one's a bit pricey because it's one of the last release figures of this series. And these two are really hard to find. I had a chance to buy them, but I never bought them. So, you know, if you can get those two, you're laughing. Space Troopers, no problem because it's been re released on the, on the blue card. And that's the version I've got. Okay, so, really nice figure. Shaq T. Builder Droid 61, I think. Yep, Builder Droid 61. In her sort of tribal gear of a lightsaber. Nice figure. And very popular with blokes for some reason. Anyway, it's time to go to bed. Anyway, no more messing around. Nice figure, nice lightsaber, great detailing on the figure. I'll take a few photographs because I never photographed this one before, and you better see it in better detail. Okay, time to say goodbye. Okay, here we've got two very famous vintage figures. We've got Yak Face, and he's from the Power of the Force range only released on a Canadian and Tri-Logo card in 1985 and here we've got uh, the Blue Snaggletooth very famous figure only released in the Sears Creature Cantina in the USA so you know I've already got photographs of these up on YouTube so I thought I might as well just do a quick review of them so you've got Yak Face here very nice figure very good condition this one and hasn't got a staff bought this back in 1993 and in those days it wasn't too expensive got it off a guy an English seller he used to go to a comic mart it's called Mr uh, I think his name was Mr Sci-Fi and he used to sell Star Wars figures really cheap so the li limbs on this are quite stiff still very good so yet face with very famous head sculpt there and very nice figure head is very stiff 19 yep 1985 is the year this figure came out and you can still get this one loose loose like this you took about maybe cheapest you get for about 60 quid and then the blue snagger too so a lot more of a hot figure. Got this one about uh, say maybe early 2000s. I'm not sure when I got this one. Not the best condition. The limbs are a bit loose. Uh, had it seen better days this one. The paint's coming off the boots and so has the year 1970 hard to make it out at the bottom and then you know there's two versions of this figure one with a dent in the boot and then one without a dent in the boot and look this belt looks like it's had a bit of touch up silver paint on it but apart from that some wear to the head back of the head some hair, black hair paint loss but if you look closely this is the blue snag very nice figure very old figure now and more desirable than the yak face harder to come by so you know still if you check AFA the population for graded blue snags there's quite a, a lot of them around it's just that everyone wants it same with the yak face everyone wants the yak face that's why they, they command so much money these are two mega well-known um, 
vintage Star Wars figures. So if you say Blue Snag, everyone knows what you're talking about, or Yak Face, everyone knows what you're talking about. And these are the two uh, figures. So you've got Yak Face here, classic figure. Probably still the best ever version of Yak Face. The Power of the Force 2 version was never never as good as this version. And then you've got the Blue Snag. Again, still the best version. I mean, the, I know uh, Hasbro did a, a sort of revamp on this figure, but still, this is the best version. This is a classic. And so, we're talking about graded. This one's hitting about 200 to 300. It's slightly more expensive in the USA than in the UK, but still very expensive, the blue snag. And then the Yak. Uh, easier to get, much easier, depending on condition. Some come with a staff, some don't. So, and this would come with a blue Han Solo, Solo pistol as well, the blue snag. Obviously my one doesn't. But these are two red figures. So, there's Yak Face and blue snag. Time to say goodbye. Oh here, my name is Yakris and I'd like to say that I'm quite a rare Star Wars figure and you may try to find me on eBay but I, I think you'll find that I'm quite pricey. Hey there, my name's Blue Snag and I'm from America and you know, I, I go for more bucks than this this guy here. Well, how rude, how typically American, how, how, you know, you should wait for your turn turn to speak. So I'd like to begin end this show by just saying uh, thank you for watching and uh, as very British I'm going to do something very British to this uh, colonial upstart as you say. God damn it what are you talking about? Uh, time to say goodbye Blue Snaggle say face. Uh, keep watching and you know, subscribe, leave comments, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, time to say goodbye, Blue Snaggletooth. Uh, goodbye! Bang! Yes, that's how we do deal, deal with uh, the riffraff, you know. Uh, you hit the head button and all that sort of stuff. So, time to say goodbye and all that. So, goodbye, goodbye. Uh, watch the Olympics. God save the Queen and all that, you know. Um, it's not a nation of chads, you know. We have some redeeming creatures. Okay, time to say goodbye. Tally ho, and all that. Bye. Okay, I was in Forbidden Planet as well on that Friday when I got the other figures, the Action Force figure and the um, Shaq T figure. And then I went to Forbidden Planet in London and got these two. So, this one was £6.99. It's the... Stealth Ops Clone Trooper, and I believe this is a um, exclusive figure. So, really nice figure. Seen reviews on, on this by Sith Lord 229, and he draws attention to that sort of yellowish black design there on the top of the helmet and the removable earmuffs. Take those earmuffs off, the figure looks kind of freaky. Comes in a sort of greyish. Uh, our light grey armour with dark grey apps and you know looks pretty decent so you know there's a good picture of the figure from the Galactic Battle game and you know this is a European card that's so covered in a uh, European blah 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 I don't think this was a Toys R Us exclusive, exclusive. obviously it's a peg warm as well because Forbidden Planet are selling it off for 6 99 uh, pardon me Stealth Ops Clone Trooper. Then it's got millions. A stealth Operation Clone Trooper shows a Wookiee how to survive dangerous combat missions. And then it's a typical European card, just loads of information. And you can have a good look at the figure there. Okay, so this is your Stealth Ops Clone Trooper at Forbidden Planet at the moment in London, 6.99. I'm sure it's all in all Forbidden Planets in the UK. So, worth picking up, probably in Toys R Us as well, in the UK. And we've got here, for 5 .99, it's the it's a reissue figure, it's the uh, Anakin Skywalker in the space suit. 
for I don't know why I picked this one quite nice figure and nice bubble helmet, lightsaber all that sort of stuff uh, I just got it because it was probably the cheapest one there and you've got the sort of bubble helmet there it's got a brief description the Septuagintists have stolen the Jedi holocron containing the secret names of future Jedi Anakin contrives a daring maneuver to board the Separatist frigate and retrieve the holocron Skywalker has shown a team of clone troopers drop through space on ATT walkers land on the outside of the frigate and breach the ship so there's all the information and all that sort of stuff so, nice figure there. Okay, there you go. Anakin Skywalker in the spacesuit on a second release US card and the uh, Stealth Op Clone Trooper, on, which is an exclusive figure. And I'm not sure if the US got the same card as that or a different card. So, there you go. Two Clone Wars figures. Been really neglecting Clone Wars of late, but these two. I just picked up. Uh, Entertainer in the UK has got qu a quite a good sale on, uh, on figures as well. They're still pricey compared to American figures, but still, you know, worth checking out. They're selling off the Saga Legends and stuff like that. Okay, cheers. Goodbye.